what? Just what? You know? Like, what? Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I'm going to be starting a new book diary and it is going to be for Furyborn by Claire Legrand. So all I know about this book so far is that it is about two queens who are separated by 500 years and yet are connected by a prophecy and also possibly blood. I've read chapter one, I've rubbed my eyes extremely hard because there's angels in it which I definitely did not expect. So I'm now a little bit more hesitant going into it than I was to start off with because I didn't sign up for a book with angels. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes and how I feel about it. So, so far I'm guessing the queen from 500 years ago has had a baby and sent the baby away because of reasons that I don't really understand. And the boy that was taking the baby away seems to not have made it through this weird portal that he made but the baby has escaped. So that's all I've read so far. The chapter that I'm about to start starts two years before that. So we'll see where the story goes. I don't really have much of a clue at the minute and I'll fill you in when I have some more thoughts. So I've only read two pages, but I just feel like this language isn't appropriate for the time that this is set. I am assuming that this is the princess or queen or whatever from 500 years ago and regardless I feel like this is going to be in like a medieval type fantasy setting throughout. I don't think the queen in the more recent timeline is going to be any more like modern like I don't feel like she's going to live in our world I feel like it's going to be straight up fantasy but I feel like this is the queen from 500 years ago anyway. They've just found out that a princess has been murdered from a neighbouring country that they're not really getting on with and this guy that she delivered the message to that the princess is dead says you shouldn't look so happy about it and it says she slid into the chair across from him I'm not happy about it or anything I'm simply intrigued I'm not happy about it or anything that's something that I would say and I have like a very obviously colloquialized northern English accent and way of speaking so I don't feel like I'm not happy about it or anything really fits with the time period of this world that I'm getting a sense of. So I just thought that was worth mentioning. Obviously I'm only on page 16 so I could be wrong about the time period but it just feels very medieval like and that just didn't really fit for me. I'm now on page 32 and we've been introduced to the second queen which is Eliana and that is actually 1000 years later not 500 like I originally thought. So I'm getting very like Selena Sardothian vibes from her. She's like a vigilante. But she's just chased down these guys who are apparently kidnapping women and children. And they're in, bo in a boat. And she's like attacked them. And it says, the figure on the dock turned just as Eliana reached him. She whirled, caught him with her boot under his chin. He fell, choking. One of the figures from the boat jumped onto the dock. She swiped him across the throat with Arabeth, pushed him into the water after his comrade. She spun around, triumphant, beckoned at the abductor still waiting in the boat. Come on, love, she crooned. You're not afraid of me, are you? She has a lot of Selena swagger. Like, she, she's very much... So, like, the place that she's in, the setting of this new area, which is quite far away from the area we started from, like, what I've gathered from the map. And it's... It, it's just like Rifthold, and she's just like Selena. So that's very interesting and I hope she isn't just like a cookie cutter type Selena character because um, I'm, I'm already currently reading Empire of Storms so I don't need more than one Selena in my life right now. So Eliana just killed three children so I completely take back what I said about her being like Selena because Selena has a heart and does not pull that shit. This so far has got references to lots of people and things and politics in the world that haven't been explained yet. So I don't really understand a lot of what's going on but I do not support the killing of three children. She's like very, I, I was feeling Selena first but now I'm feeling like Mia from Nevernight but with a less brutal and badass writing style. So we'll see. So I'm on page 68 and I do not appreciate this. Riel is racing in the boom chase, is that what it's called? and she's using her powers because the assassins are after Eldrick and it says she's like it's disgusting her horse is called Malaya 
and it says, Malaya took a few faltering steps and then something beneath Riel gave way and she looked down. Her horse was a raw pulpy mess drenched with blood, patches of her grey coat charred black and smoking. I, I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate it. Anything to do with animals in books? No. No. Especially graphic things. I don't need it. So I'm on page 112 now and we've met the wolf who then said his name was Sam and my mind was blown. I even wrote on a sticky tab, I was like, is the wolf El Eliana? Eliana's father? And then I felt foolish like five pages later because it turns out that it's Sam. So there was that. I'm also beginning to really like the men more. I really like the wolf, Sam. I like Audric a lot more now. It's weird, like I had loads of criticisms as you will have seen at the beginning of this video. And now I've got up to, I'm on page 131, I'm so sorry. Now that I've got further into it, I'm actually really enjoying it. Like it's compelling me to read on now that I've got over the first hurdle. So Harkon has just sacrificed himself, which was a little bit sad, but I didn't really get time to get to know him. I did glimpse a few people's Goodreads reviews and they weren't good. I mean, it has a 3.88 overall, which is decent, but what people were saying about it just was not good. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. I like Eliana more than I like Riel. Riel's kind of airy fairy and a bit boring for me, but they haven't really done anything yet. Like I know what Riel's, Riel's deal is because she is in the beginning of the book, but I don't know the deal with Eliana. Like I don't know her purpose or anything because it's a thousand years later and she said that she found, or her mother found the pendant of Audric or Audric on the floor so it's not like a family heirloom so I don't really know how she fits into it but I'm gonna go do some more reading now I just thought I'd fill you in on my thoughts on what I've read so far but yeah it's actually picking up and I'm surprised don't know if you can see this but I have like 15 tabs in it already and I'm on page 130 I normally don't tab very much at all I tab like 10 things per book so um that's a lot that's that's a lot of stuff that I've tabbed. So I was determined to not do another update for this book diary in my Disney pajamas because it looks like I haven't moved in days, but I have. And these are just my favorite pajamas. I keep putting them in the wash and then drying them really quickly and putting them back on because I love them so much. And yeah, I just, I just wanted to put my pajamas on because it's Friday. So irrelevant, but I just thought I'd clarify. It seems at the minute like there's a love triangle for everybody in this book, like Riel has Tal and Audric, Audric, I still don't know how to pronounce his name, and Eliana has Simon and Harkon, who I don't believe is dead, so love triangles everywhere, which I feel like it's a little bit much to add two love triangles. I also feel like both of the queens have very fluid sexuality, there's nothing wrong with that, it just seems weird that like both would have that. So Riel said something about how she'd flirted with everyone essentially, she was like oh I even flirted with Ludovine and I know Eliana talks about in her line of work bedding both men and women so it's strange. I know there's LGBT rep in this because there's a guy that Eliana's just met who's the head of this refugee camp and he says this is my husband so there's LGBT rep I just find it strange that I don't know maybe both of the main characters seem like the same person in different settings they have like completely black and white personalities so Riel at the minute is this like golden child although apparently she's the blood queen and Eliana is like this evil one like Mia from Nevernight but aside from that both into men and women both got a love triangle going on I don't know, I criticise this book a lot, I am enjoying it, it compels me to read on, but I do have problems with it. So it was mentioned briefly earlier about Tal and her father trying to kill her, and I kind of thought that like it was maybe exaggerated, but I've just got to this part on page 172, um, where she's about to do the water trial and she's looking back at Tal and she's remembering this moment, and it says... Let's go over here, Riel, here under the willow tree where the water is warm and quiet. Tal's hands tight around her throat, holding her under. So we tried to drown her and she's borderline in love with this guy. What? Just what? You know? Like, what? 
and the other thing is that it's like completely brushed over like like i said she's borderline in love with this guy he tried to kill her what is that about so i've read a few chapters of fury bomb and the way the action scenes are really annoying like the chapter with the metal trial i just could not follow what was going on at all it's very rushed there's not enough description at the beginning to sort of set the scene and so during the action scene like you have no idea what's going on also i have a theory from the way two characters have been described i've gone past the part where eliana goes into that vision and then sees the emperor and the emperor sees her and then i got to the bit where riel saw corian 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 and i think that corian is the emperor so that's interesting because the reason that i picked up on it is because i was annoyed that two characters were described exactly the same then i thought oh maybe maybe they're the same person so i just passed the controversial and also steamy sex scene and i agree that it's a little bit much for ya i felt that it was possibly more graphic than a court of mist and fury because it was very descriptive and it, it was steamy like i i enjoyed it but at the same time, like, Riel's blowing hot and cold. She's like, touch me, touch me, touch me. And then she's like, no, you must leave. And then he's like, why must I leave? And then she's like, no, no, come here. And it's all very, like, hot and cold and, like, very quick change in her mind. So there's that. So I finished Fury Born a while ago. But, like, I'm, I was just so mind-fucked that it's taken me like forever to wrap up this reading vlog so i gave it a four on goodreads but it was more like a 3.5 because i was really engrossed in the story and for some reason was compelled to move on i really liked the character of wolf and i also kind of liked audric although not so much towards the end but i didn't like the writing i had a lot of problems i had a problem with that horse scene i had a problem with the especially the writing of the action scenes of the trials i just i'm just so confused i can't even really like give you a proper review like i did a whole thing in my wrap up and i just don't i don't know i don't know because the things that i really hated but overall i did enjoy the story so i'm kind of just going to leave it at that you have seen like i've just edited the footage you've seen my thoughts the main things that i had i had issue with and like I said, I, I there was something about it that compelled me to move on and continue and I will pick up the next book in the series because I got to the end of the book and I did kind of feel like nothing had happened plot-wise. I didn't really feel like much had moved forward. Like, you kind of found out who the characters were. You found out that Eliana was the baby. So she's Riel's daughter and they, like, jumped through time. So you found out that and things like that, but it was all just, like characters realizing things about themselves there was no actually moving forward of the plot i don't know where it's going next and this whole book just has me really confused so i'm just gonna leave it there thank you very much for watching this please let me know what you thought of this book i'm assuming that if you watch this that you have read it so please leave me a comment let me know how you felt did you agree with me didn't you let's start a discussion but don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. And all my stuff is in my description box. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows. With guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.